So we are continuing in our look at um, early church fathers and uh, today's session we're going to be looking at Irenaeus of Lyons um, who lived between 125 and 202 um, AD so that makes him a uh, second century um, saint and um, and church father. Now he's he's counted as both an apologist and theologian within the church, and he actually represents a transition in in terms of church development and in terms of the history of the fathers, where the apologists um, increasingly became theologians. His work against the heresies, also known as against those falsely called Gnostics, just trips off the tongue, um, was chiefly written um, against Gnostics, who were essentially a, a group of people who had been who had, who had uh, been influenced by the growth of Christianity, but were essentially Platonists, and um, they were essentially Platonists gone mad. Um, you know, you, you've got people like Valentinus, Marcion, uh, Basilides, uh, Simon. Um, Saint Irenaeus was born in Smyrna uh, in the year 125. Um, and he had actually been the disciple of Saint Polycarp, and Saint Polycarp was the disciple of Saint John the Apostle. And so you've got this uh, link directly to the apostles. So we're going to be reading uh, from the work aforementioned, um, and we're going to be reading snippets and just talking about um, some of those snippets. And I am going to be skipping parts of the passage um, just to draw out certain things. So the, uh, our passage begins, um, we could never have learned the things of God unless our teacher existing as the word had become man. No other being had the power to reveal to us the things of the father, except his very own word. Now, what you see there is immediately um, both an assertion of the idea of the incarnation, um, where it says the word had become man, and the divinity of the son, where it says that our teacher referring to Jesus Christ um, couldn't reveal what the father, you know, the things of the father, except that he is his very own word. So the word of God being eternal means that Jesus Christ was also eternal. And so you've got both a clear testimony to um, uh, the belief in Christ as as God and as truly man um, right there in Irenaeus. And he goes on to state this. The Lord has redeemed us through his own blood, giving his soul for our souls, his flesh for our flesh. He has poured out the spirit of the father for the union and communion of God and man. He has truly given God to men by means of the spirit, and he has brought man to God by his own incarnation. At his coming, he has given us lasting and true immortality by means of communion with God. Before these truths, all the doctrines of the heretics fall to ruin. Now, you know, he's, he's stated in black and white, not only that the father is God, that the son is God, but he's also stated here very clearly that the Holy Spirit is God because it is the spirit of the father that Jesus Christ has given and that in giving the spirit of the father he has given to us God and so you can clearly see that Irenaeus is, is speaking from a Trinitarian framework one that I feel as a Christian 2,000 years later very comfortable with um, um, and you also see here this idea of theosis this idea of you know something of Christian the Christian understanding of salvation is a, a communion with God where the divine and man meet together, um, where the Holy Spirit is present amongst his people and God is present in his temple, the church here on earth. And, and that's very much our understanding of what salvation is. It is this 
thing won by Christ in his blood, um, his exchange, his soul for our souls, and that communion that we have with God through the Holy Spirit. Um, and that remains the understanding of, of Christian spirituality and soteriology. Um, he goes on to state, it is the same thing to say that he merely seems to appear and to say that he received nothing at all from Mary, for he would not have truly had flesh and blood by which he redeemed us unless he had summed up in himself the ancient form of Adam. Now, this is in reply to Gnostics who deny that Christ was truly flesh. Um, and Irenaeus is making the argument that if, if Christ wasn't truly flesh, then we're not saved because him becoming flesh is what saves our flesh. Um, him becoming flesh is what restores the divine image within us. And so it, it's explaining the importance of the incarnation to the Christian understanding of salvation. Empty then are the disciples of Valentinus who put forth this opinion in order that they may exclude all flesh from salvation and cast aside what God has fashioned. So he's basically saying that Valentinus and the Gnostics um, believe in a salvation without um, without flesh, so that something that God has created will not, uh, from Irenaeus's point of view, will not enter into salvation. Um and then he goes on to talk about another group, the Ebionites, and listen to what he says. Empty too are the Ebionites who do not receive by faith into their soul the union of God and man, but who remain in the old leaven of the natural birth. They choose not to believe that the Holy Spirit came upon Mary and that the power of the Most High overshadowed her. Now, that's a quote from Luke, which demonstrates Irenaeus was using Luke as an authority, even before um, the canonization of scripture so that what was born of her was something holy the son of the most high god now that's again trinitarian language right there the father of all caused the incarnation of this being and showed forth a new kind of birth by the old birth we inherited death but by this new birth we inherit life and and this shows that shows that the Ebionites, who were um, a, a Jewish um, break-off um, from the Christian church, they denied the virgin birth. They believed that Christ was born of a physical union between Joseph and Mary. Um, and so, you know, they 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 denied the, the virgin birth of our Lord, and they denied that the Holy Spirit was responsible for that incarnation so as well as the fact that you've got um Irenaeus quoting a, a gospel of Luke making a very clear and overt reference to it um you've also got the fact that he's talking very clearly uh, and explicitly about this idea of the incarnation of of the word of God becoming flesh taking on real flesh but it's for a purpose which is that we are to leave the old and embrace the new. And that, that is very much at the heart of the idea of Christian spirituality, that you put off your old self and you embrace a new. And it's this idea of old covenant and new covenant, which is what he's accusing the Ebionites of still being in. They're still in the old covenant. Um, but it's this idea that as Christians in our communion with God, we are transformed in uh, and, and we receive a new birth, uh, which is again a reference to Christ's teaching in the Gospel of John, um, which is this idea that we are born again and born again into a new kind of life. That life is the life that should have been there from the beginning. And it is that kind of life that we're meant to grow into as Christians. So what you've got here is Irenaeus, a hammer to the heretics, explaining um, vividly core Christian beliefs of um, soteriology, that salvation, incarnation, and trinity. And he's made reference to all of those in this passage, and he made reference to them um, in the second century.